Coming up on The Point, the Black Knights get ready to take on the midshipmen. Stay tuned. Welcome to the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York. Home to 4,400 cadets. The oldest continuously occupied military post in the country, West Point sits on over 16,000 acres and is one of the largest school campuses in the world. Here, the leaders of tomorrow are trained. With over 40 majors to choose from, the academy is one of the most highly regarded schools in the nation. The academy offers 25 Division I sports, and several of its athletes have participated in the Winter and Summer Olympic Games. But the academy prepares a cadet for far more than just educational feats. It prepares them for joining the ranks of the finest army in the world. The Long Gray Line has produced many great leaders, and here we will take an inside look into their world. I'm your host, Sergeant Alexandria Cornero, and this is The Point. Well, the time is finally here, and the Corps has been waiting in anticipation for the Black Knights and the Midshipmen to take to the field for the annual Army-Navy game. In the days leading up to the game, cadets held a spirit dinner and bonfire in hopes of torching the Midshipmen. Let's check it out. It's been a long-standing tradition leading up to the Army-Navy football game for West Point to hold a spirit dinner and bonfire in honor of the team. Cadets filed into the mess hall to join the superintendent, Lieutenant General David Huntoon, for the academy's annual spirit dinner. The superintendent donned his former Letterman sweater for the occasion, joking with the Corps that after all these years, it still fit. During the dinner in Washington Hall, cadets enjoyed spirit videos before heading out to Daly Field for the bonfire and send-off. The highly anticipated game embodies the spirit of the inter-service rivalry between the Army Black Knights and the Navy Midshipmen. The game, which is broadcast by CBS, is played on a neutral arena. The two teams will meet up this year at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. The annual game first took place during the 1890s and serves as a form of inter-service bragging rights. Currently, Navy holds the title between the two schools. However, that hasn't stopped the Black Knights from pushing for a win. The marathon team will hit the road as well, running the game ball to the stadium, a distance of over a hundred miles. To mark the beginning of their journey, the team captain of the football team hands the ball off to the captain of the marathon team. I think we've all been saying this thing for way too long now. First East Dodge Department. That was a long clean year where all we had to say was beat Navy yeah. to every single upperclassman, all right? Yeah. Yeah. We're not Queens right now. Preach. Preach. It's been a long week. We've been saying beat Navy Preach. the whole week long, Preach. right? Preach. Yeah. 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 We've been saying beat Navy way too long. It's time to go out and do it. That's exactly what we're going to do this Saturday. All right? Also joining in the pep rally was the Army head coach, Rich Ellerson. And the Corps Brigade tactical officer, Colonel Mark McKern, also wearing his Letterman sweater. Determined to take the win this time around, the Corps roared as the Navy boat was brought out onto the field and set ablaze, symbolizing the Black Knight's determination to bring the midshipmen down. The traditional burning of the boat is only part of the excitement felt throughout the Corps in the days leading up to the game. The team will grind their knuckles in the dirt with the entire core behind them, marking the 111th time the two academies have gone head to head. I'm with the whole place and not win it. Come on. Here we go. Put your hands in the air. <laughs> Even though the Black Knights recovered two fumbles by Navy and fought their way back from a slow first quarter, in the second half, Navy took the win 31-17.
Now this is a section of our show where we like to take the time out to answer any questions you have for the cadets here at the Academy. This week's question comes to us from Daisy in Henderson, Nevada. Daisy asks, how do cadets balance their coursework with all their other obligations? Well, Daisy, let's find out. Hello, my name is Cadet Yash Kushru. To answer your question on how to handle all of the coursework here at West Point, first of all, uh, by working hard and coming in every day with a good attitude. Using your agenda and uh, prioritizing everything that needs to be done throughout the day will help you accomplish this. I wish you all the best and thank you for your question. Remember, if you have a question for a cadet, please email us at askacadet at gmail.com. Please include your name, location, and question. Well, that's it for this week's edition. I'm your host, Sergeant Alexandria Cornero, and this is The Point. Hey, hey, hey.